What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything, and in this video we're having a look at a chef's knife. Now a bit of background with that is that I'm a pretty happy amateur cook, by no means a professional or anything, but I really enjoy cooking for myself, my family, friends, uh, and especially the process of creating a nice tasting dish. But with that uh, comes a high demand for the equipment I use, from cutting boards to pans and so on, and in this case uh, the knives as well. Um, we're having a look at my new chef knife, which is from Swilling & Henkel, which uh, is pretty much the top knife manufacturer here in Germany. And this is uh, one of their Japanese lines, this is the Miyabi line, which is pretty much um, all you can ever want in terms of sharpness, hardness, uh, durability, uh, and I even think design as well. So we're going to take a close look at it, I'll show you all the features and a little bit of background about the brand and this uh, particular series of knives. Alright, so here we are with the Rocking Santoku 7-inch chef knife from the Miyabi line from Swilling Henkel. Now that's a whole mouthful, uh, but the good news is that Swilling Henkel is one of the biggest uh, knife makers in Germany and considered one of the best knife makers in the world. And they have a flagship store here in Dusseldorf in Germany where I live. So you can imagine I was pretty happy about that when I started looking into knives, because uh, when you go to your, sort of your general kitchen store they have some selection of knives, uh, but your choice will be limited. And uh, obviously a flagship store has all the knives. So I went there and it was a really nice sort of two hour journey into knives and to see the difference between all the lines they have, all the kind of steel they have, and uh, all the different variety in shapes and sizes and prices, obviously. Uh, now you can get Swilling Henkel knives for as little as 30, 40 euro, and you'll be very happy with them and they'll get you along just fine. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, you can go up to 2,000 euro for collector's items, uh, mega awesome, one kind of one of a kind edition knives, uh, and everything in between, really. Now this knife was a little over 200 euro, which sounds expensive for a knife, uh, and it is, you know, by all standards. Uh, but a knife is something I use in the kitchen every single day uh, for a variety of tasks and it's something um, you know personal that makes the cooking experience really more enjoyable for me. Now to show you where I come from this is my or was my knife for the past I suppose good part of 10 years. It's a Scampon uh, knife, uh, 8 inch sort of standard shape chef knife and uh, I hope you can see it on camera but it's taken quite a bit of uh, wear and tear over the years. Uh, it's not you know high-end knife, uh, it's not a very cheap knife either it's just a nice sort of middle-of-the-road knife uh, with a good weight and it served me really well. So when I went looking for a new knife, I had a few requirements. First of all, I wanted it to be a sort of a general purpose knife. Um, you know, I'm all for specialist equipment, but there's no point, uh, or I see no point since I'm not a professional chef, to have 75 different knives in my kitchen and to use one for each task. That's just too complicated. Uh, so I wanted a knife that could do most basic tasks uh, and I wanted a knife that was sharp. Because um, as good as my Scampa knife was, uh, sharpness was something that disappeared over the years. It still worked fine, uh, but you know, it wasn't anything to write home about. Uh, that was actually the biggest revelation uh, when trying out all the different knives uh, from Swilling Henko and especially a knife from the Miyabi line. This is an exceptionally hard uh, steel. They say it has an SG2 powder steel core that is clad in layers of nickel and stainless steel. Uh, so that's, you know, the, the basic structure of the knife. And then it's uh, ice hardened to the hardness scale of 63 Rockwell for both uh, exceptional durability and sharpness. You can imagine the sh uh, harder your knife is, the sharper it can get. And uh, 63 is, uh, you know, almost as hard as it gets. Uh, the knife is actually so hard uh, that I need to get sort of the diamond uh, coated uh, rod to sharpen it on a daily basis because the normal steel rods uh, and even the, the upgraded steel rods are just not hard enough. They're less hard than the knife so there's no sharpening going on. Now what are we talking about here? Uh, this is how you get it actually. The, this is the packaging which is a little bit disappointing uh, to be honest because it just comes in this with a sort of a, a plastic, uh, hard plastic cover over it. Uh, and for a 200 plus euro knife, you know, it's not cheap uh, by any standard. Uh, the packaging is a bit disappointing. You know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a fancy velvet uh, pillow on it or anything, but they think they could have done a little bit better. It is functional though, so, you know, whatever, it works. Now this is a, let me take it out. It's a 7 inch uh, blade, but it's sort of a rounded 
bottom part here, if you can see that properly on camera, and it's a uh, wooden um, handle. Now the handle, let's start on that side, it's a distinctive pucker wood handle with um, brass and red spacers, stainless steel end cap and an attractive mosaic pin. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. Um, here's the end cap, hope you can see that too. Uh, so it's very, uh, it's very appealing, it's very attractive. Uh, but for me what was most important is the grip. Because going back to the Scanpan knife, uh, you can see it has a bit of a bolster here, and I hold my knife like this. So I'm, I'm pretty severely leaning on that bolster in order to hold the knife tight. And if you look on the other side, I actually keep my finger here on the bottom part of the knife. And that was actually a thing with some other knives that Svitting has. Uh, there are knives that have um, where the blade goes sort of into a, a tip, almost like the, the top of the knife. Uh, so that's really sharp. So for me, that was a bit of, uh, you know, searching for a knife that didn't have the very sharp edge here, because I felt like you know when I'm spending 200 plus euros on a knife, I want a knife that adapts to me and not the other way around. So I wanted a knife that fit my cutting style and my grip uh, just the way it was, uh, rather than having to change my grip around the knife. And I think at that price range, you, uh, you know, it's pretty justifiable to make that decision that way. So I went for one that had the sort of slightly curved edge here uh, to protect my fingers and to sort of keep my grip. So this is the way I hold it now, just in the same position. Now I was initially looking for a knife in this uh, shape because it can uh, pretty much do it all. You can have the Santoku knife uh, as a flat blade as well, which means you can only use it to chop. Now because this is curved pretty much like a chef knife is, uh, like a traditional shaped chef knife is, you can also use it to rock it back and forward like so to cut herbs for example, uh, which was a requirement I had as well. Uh, like I said before, I want an all-round knife that can do it all. Now you can see that there's quite a, I hope you can see it properly in the light, there's quite a pattern on the knife and I hope I don't butcher the pronunciation here too much. It's called a Tsuhim finish, Tsuhimi finish. Um, which is a hammered, um, hand hammered style finish that makes the knife look a lot more attractive. All these knives uh, from the Miyabi line are actually um, made in Japan, hand honed in Seiki, that's where they make them, using traditional sharpening methods according to Switting Henkel, uh, resulting in a scalpel-like sharpness. And uh, like I mentioned before, the sharpness was really the revelation of uh, the whole experience for me. Uh, this is, you know, by no means a, a blunt knife or anything, but the difference between cutting with a, a sharp knife and an actually sharp knife is incredible. It's night and day. It's like uh, driving, you know, a, a beaten down car thinking, oh, you know, it's all, all doing well. And then you drive a brand new Ferrari and you suddenly realize what proper brakes and proper engine performance are. Uh, the difference really is stunning. And that was actually, yeah, like I said, the, the best part for me for the whole experience is to really feel the difference between the different kinds of steels, the different kinds of knife, uh, and just the different kinds of possibilities you have with different kinds of hardness uh, in terms of cutting and uh, performance in the kitchen. So that was great. All in all, I think it's quite an attractive uh, knife in general. Um, not that I really care about how the knife looks, because you know this looks very plain uh, and it's very functional, but it's, it's, it's a nice piece to look at uh, regardless. And that is, you know, it's a nice bonus feature. Uh, but the performance of this knife has been fantastic for me. Uh, I enjoy it every time I pick it up. I think, oh yes, that was definitely a good choice. Um, the downside of having such a sharp knife, obviously, is that you cut yourself. You probably see my finger here and I have several small cuts everywhere. Uh, you look at this knife from the wrong angle and you'll cut yourself. So it's definitely something you have to be careful with um, in your sort of whole cooking process that you, you know, make sure that you know what you're doing, get a good grip on everything. Um, and sort of you know, watch out for yourself that you don't really cut your finger off because once you get a you know proper chop on and you do make a mistake you you are going to cut your finger off it's that sharp um, another downside of the sharpness is that the sharpness um, requires maintenance now because the steel is so hard you'll be fine uh, you know for for several weeks before you actually have to properly sharpen it uh, but in the meantime you really have to use the sharpening rod almost on a daily basis uh, in order to 
uh, keep that fine edge and to keep it as sharp as possible. And you really notice the difference uh, in the sharpness when you don't uh, use the sharpening rod for a few days. Uh, you really know, you notice that sort of that edge uh, that, that feels so nice is gone. All in all, I'm extremely happy with this knife. Um, I think after spending a couple of hours in the store really uh, picking my way through what uh, they had on offer, what was possible uh, within budget, uh, I think I made a fantastic choice and I, I've been very happy with it ever, every time I use it. Um, I think it looks good, I think it performs exceptionally well um, and I'm, yeah, I'm a very happy customer with my purchase and I can certainly recommend this for anybody who takes their cooking serious. Now you don't necessarily have to spend over 200 euros on a knife, uh, like I said before they have anything uh, pretty much for any price range um, and uh, they were even honest enough to admit that uh, you know I was like okay do we need to look any further to even better performance and they're like yeah you know as long as you're not a professional chef there's no real need to go any more fancy or whatever than this one um, and they were right I mean it has performed so well and I cannot really imagine needing any extra performance above this kind of knife so money well spent and a very happy customer in my case this is Peter from Reviews on Anything with a uh, not so short look at the 7 inch rocking Santoku knife from the Miyabi line from Swilling Henkel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and keep your fingers safe. Cheers!